It's technically the last day of harvest. The only thing we have left to harvest, here, let me show you through binoculars. You can't really see the crop too well, but you can kind of make it out. See that terrace and then that's actually corn there. That's our last crop we have to harvest. Everything else is out. So we're gonna prepare for that, we're gonna rip that, and then we're gonna call it a year. And then next year, or I should say decade, <clears throat> 2000 series, we're gonna be changing up equipment and getting different equipment. Now, as far as equipment, if you guys have been following this series along, we usually have a lot of John Deere. But as you can see, we got a Case IH, and then Austin, my, I don't know where my Massey went, my Massey Ferguson. I think the dude I, I formed with Austin Farmer, he's like a partner kind of in our operation. And my Massey's gone and I just pull up one day and there's a Case IH 9310. We have some blood on our hands and I don't like that. So as we move into the next decade, I think we're gonna have to get some more deer on the farm. Also, let me jump on my three wheeler to show you guys an idea. I gotta say, if you guys end up enjoying this farmer video, smash that like button. It always helps out. Oh gosh. But we have a neighbor, Fred here. He's uh he's an older gentleman and he's actually retiring. So he came to me one day and he was like, hey, next year would you want to rent out my buildings? I was like, we really don't need your buildings, but man, you got some nice buildings. So potentially we may be renting out uh we may be renting out Fred's buildings. He has a quant set. Then he has a shop over there, and then he has two cold storage buildings, which I guess three, if you consider the Quonset. But it also gives us an opportunity to rent out some of Fred's land that he previously had, because he offered that up too. So what me and Austin may have to do is expand our operation just a little bit. I'll show you guys inside some of these. Man, this hasn't been used for a while. And then here's the shop. Check this out. He's got everything cleared out. He had to auction. His, he had his auction a couple months back. How could you be a Nebraska fan? We live in Northeast Iowa, and he's a Nebraska fan. So Austin's gone today, so what I'm gonna do is there's gonna be no grain cart. It's just gonna be me, combine, gravity wagons, and tractor, because there's we got nobody to run the grain cart. So I'm just gonna have to pull up to the grain, the gravity wagons and unload into them. Now we just, we did just get this KSH 7110, and I, I'm gonna be honest, I like that thing. I would like to use the 4955, but we got a new tractor, so the 4955 is all cleaned up, and I don't really want to get it out. And the 7110, believe it or not, I know, even though it's red, it sounds amazing. So, I think we're going to use that, and I'm going to take off the loader to pull the gravity wagons. Let me hop in her. I mean, check this out. Put her in gear. I'm not sure how long it's going to be until we put this loader back on. So, I don't want to let this thing sit outside. I'd rather put it under some meat, some storage. And then all I'm gonna do is pull in here and we'll drop the loader in between the sprayer and the bush hog. The only thing I would change on the 7110, and I understand why we have it, is we have a wide front axle on this tractor. And I don't know why Austin bought it like this. Usually we always buy narrow front axle tires because it works better for our operation and our row crop sizing. So I'm gonna swing around and hook up to the J&M gravity wagons. Pull those out to the field, and heck, maybe we only need one. We're hooked up, pin is dropped in, I think we're ready to go. Now one thing you want to be careful of, we don't want to be going too fast, especially since we're in Northeast Iowa where it's fairly hilly with these gravity wagons. Otherwise, if we get full load on here, first of all, this tractor is kind of pushing it. We probably should have a heavier tractor with this much weight. But also, if you're going around turns, I mean, these things can flip over, kill somebody, hit a Prius. These things are dangerous, especially if you're taking fast corners. So, I always want to be slow with them. Swing wad. Stop all the way. Coast is clear. Okay. Shift up to road gear. The way this map cr is created or the way Seasons is created, something's messed up here to where it never turns that actual golden harvest color. I don't know where Austin even put the corn header at. He just makes decisions without me. Like, what is this? What's his girlfriend doing here? There it is, I found it. I found it. Okay, we gotta move the sprayer out of the way. And sneak around the drill. For now, we'll park the drill. It's over here in the implement area. There we go. Should be good. Combine, 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 combine. Okay, let me check the oil first. Tastes perfect. So this is on a bit of a hillside, so we gotta be, we gotta be careful. I'm gonna drop her down. 
we're gonna try to do the headlands but what's gonna kind of suck is I hopefully I don't get halfway and then get full I don't think I will I think I'll be able to make a full round this corn look if you look at the bottom right at the yield monitor this corn's yielding two oh we're gonna do this to 240 holy tamale 226 yeah looks like we're saying with 226 hey I'm fine with that so we got one pass done and we're about 64 percent full so I think I'm gonna try to do another pass we are 86 percent full so I'm gonna start filling this first gravity wagon I hope I could fill this first gravity wagon and not have to fill the second but we might have to fill the second and she's done so here's a view of how much I did so far obviously not that much I think we're gonna have to fill the second and the last corn of 1999 okay moment of truth do we fill up this gravity wagon it's gonna be a close one we're close Nah, we did it so we have about uh well we're pushing 600 probably 600 bushels in this car in this gravity wagon if it holds 680 and then this back one is empty so I should probably drop this off at the farm but it really doesn't hurt having it ah, it'd be nice to drop it off at the farm so what I'm gonna do is head back there we'll pull up on the roadway I'll tell you what having front wheel assist when you have these loaded with like 1500 bushels behind you is handy but since we only have one we're good but if there's two and you're pulling out a field sometimes you get spinning We'll shift up, hit road gear, get going. Harvest is officially done. Next year we move on to the next decade. So for now, I have no idea where to put this second gravity wagon. For now, we'll downshift here. And we'll put this second gravity wagon just right behind this shed. Because I have no idea where I need to put it. There we go. Got it unhooked. Perfect. I got to stop inside and grab some dinner real quick. I'm starving. Good old Wheaties. Okay, let's go. Man, check out how screwed up this dude's gravity wagon is. Oh, oh my gosh. I wouldn't want to be that guy. Since one of our jobs ended earlier than expected, we're going to fire up the 9310, a tractor that, well, I bought, but I've never driven because Austin was the one that bought it with, uh, with our money. So it'll be interesting firing this up. And my other Massey, my other Massey Ferguson, the four-wheel drive, is gone. So I think he just literally stole it without asking me. Or he sold, sold it without asking me. So I got the disc hooked up. We're going to disc this as deep as possible. Otherwise, I would be using a different tractor. But you need all four-wheel drive right here uh, to pull this disc with how low we're going to go. So we're going to try to rip this up. I wish I had, or I should say, I wish I had a ripper. But the disc is the most I got. So that's what we'll have to do. As far as the grain though, guys, the tractor is parked at a neighbor's farm. He said, hey, come back. I just didn't even want to deal with it today, but I'm going to talk to Austin, see what we're going to do about that. I figure the best thing to do is just empty that grain, but I need Austin there with me to help me out with help moving all the equipment over to empty out that gravity wagon. We're probably got to bring an auger over there and then get into another gravity wagon and then try to fix that axle, which I can't fix. Got to put the hazards on and there we go. And I still got to get the combine back also. Okay, we're gonna drop her down. There we go. Start pulling around these outside rows. Actually, what we should, heck, I have no idea how to even diss this field. I'm used to just a square field, so I guess we'll just do the headlands first. Oh, we got the bottom ground done. Now we got to disc up the top, and then we're good to go. But anyways, guys, hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. Now, next episode, probably by next episode, we're going to be moving towards the next decade, which should be fun. I've got a couple different mods sent to me that'll be interesting to get in the game and then purchase in real life, you could say. So, anyways, guys, thanks for watching, and hey, I'll see you guys for the next one. Thanks, guys.